Hey, what up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Knicks Cave. And for those who don't know, I'm Jay and the Knicks fan. And let's get right into it. The Knicks had a nice win last night, 119 to 197, after getting blown out by the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, you know, that was the first game back from All Star break. And they want to. You know, the players looked like they didn't have their legs under him. Maybe maybe they were doing too much partying on, you know, the All-Star break. I, at first, I thought maybe Randolph went a little bit, a little, little, I ain't even gonna get into it. But, um, yeah, last night was a, a must-win game. Like, you know, they were playing an under-depleted under -depleted team without the, their best players, a bunch of young dudes and second-year players. Oldest player playing was Al Horford on the team. Um, you know Al Horford gonna do what he do, but Al Horford is not a superstar, so he basically stayed around in that 15 to 16, and sometimes 20 point games a night. You know, he's not as young as he used to be. But like I said, let's get right into it. Um, the Knicks are back over 500, you know, saying we standing at 20 and 19. And what is funny, when we started the game, we was, uh, I think we was sixth or fifth. Yeah, we was sixth, but we won the game and we in seventh place. So that's just how packed the East is right now. Like a win, you know what I'm saying? We still down one spot when we went into the game. So um, I don't know, but we got a real tough schedule. Our second half, I mean, I mean, it's, you know, we got a first few tough games. Actually, the, the first two, I, Milwaukee. I knew Milwaukee was gonna win that game because they was out for revenge. So. Then the Thunder, you know what I'm saying? Next, the next we got um, the net, Brooklyn Nets, my hometown. Um, then we have the Philadelphia 76ers. But the thing about that, I think Kevin Durant is out. Shouldn't really bother the Nets. They got James Harden. I mean, Kyrie Irving's a good player, but James Harden's a superstar. You know what I'm saying? I really like James Harden. Uh, they just... Uh, Sign Blake Griffin. I mean, Blake Griffin. Maybe he got. Maybe he'd be rejuvenated or something. I don't know. I really can't tell. But you know, the, the Nets are the number one team in the East, and then we got the number two team in the East. Following that, with the Philadelphia. Actually, we played them twice within a five five day span. And but again, we get a break. But Philadelphia is still a good team. Uh, Joe M B is going to be out. Maybe, maybe not. I know he tweaked, he tweaked his knee, so um, he should be out. So, you know, and then we got games like Orlando and the Wizards, and then we got Milwaukee again. And I hope we come back and, you know, because it's a tie series right now between Milwaukee and, and the Knicks. We hope we come back and win that game. We hope we come back wanting some revenge and play, play the way the Milwaukee Bucks played against us. But like I said, we have um, the Wizards, we have Orlando, and there's the Mavericks too, somewhere down in the line there. I gotta look that up, I didn't go down that far, but we, I know we played the Wizards twice. And in Orlando, they're a good team, but they're a team that the Knicks should beat. You know what I'm saying, they should beat. We should beat, you know what I'm saying? Before I forget, don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and comment. And no matter when or lose, the Knicks is the team that we choose. Uh, there you go. I'm gonna get right into the stats. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry I didn't put out a video for the last game, but we all know how that game ended. So, um, and I, I was sick actually before I even put a game out. I was, I've been sick for a couple of days, still no excuse. But, um, like I said, welcome back to the second half of the season. And a lot of people not thinking the Knicks is going to do too well, but I'm still right in there. I always tell you, I'm very optimistic, especially when it comes to my team and the way we've been playing. You know what I'm saying? Tiz been doing his thing, you know. Derrick Rose and um, Alfred Payton was out, so uh, Frank Nilekina got the start. Frank keep getting chances, and he just don't produce the way that, you know, when I read uh, comments and go on to other things, a lot of people out there, they like Frank Nilekina. And I used to like Frank Nilekina in the year one and year two, but he's a good defensive player, yes, but he's not aware on your defense enough to really I don't think he's gonna stick around stick around in the NBA too long. I'm being honest with you after watching his game performance last night, you starting to really see his weaknesses. I mean he's a good defensive player but sometimes he 
just he's not like he's into the game. I don't know. Is that is basketball really his passion? That's all I can say. You know, some people they play, you know, to get the money, and maybe he feels well. Right now, he got enough money. He can go back start a business and do whatever because he's not playing like he want to last in the NBA. I'm just gonna be honest with you. So I, that brings me to wonder if is Tibbs going to start him the next game and let Quickly come off the bench? Cause we do need that spark. I don't know, but we'll see. I'm getting to the score of the game, you know. And just I, you know, I don't. I had high hopes for Frank Miller King, but it is it is what it is. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Getting back to my man, you know who I'm talking about. No, I ain't talking about Randall. Randall is our lone all star on the team, but like I be telling people all the time, R.J. Barrett is gonna be a superstar. You know what I'm saying? And his game, like I said, he reminded me of kind of. James Harden back in his earlier OKC day, OKC days when he played. He's making strides. He's really making strides from his rookie year, and you see it right now. So I really can't wait to year three, year four. That's when he's going to really, I think, start hit that plateau. I think next year he's going to be an All Star, and then the following years we can start saying, where's that max money? Where's that max money? Because, like I said, he had a career la night last night, scoring 32 points, snatched a five rebounds, three assists. He shot 12 from 21 from the field. He went three for six from three point, from three point, and he five and seven from the free throw. Three steals, two turnovers, all that. No matter of fact, one turnover, excuse me, one turnover, all that in 32 minutes. And the thing that I liked about last night, when he had scored 29 points, that was his career high. Julius Randle made sure he got the ball and told him, yo, get 30 points. Get 30 points. And that's what I like about this team. They, they, they gelling and they look out for one another. He wanted RJ, if it's going to be a career night, he wanted Rod, RJ to get in the 30s and RJ got in the 30s. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, let's get to Barrett. Uh, Barrett had a good game, bouncing back from that seven point. Uh, six rebound, matter of fact, eight rebound last time, last game out against Milwaukee. Like I said, I thought something was wrong. I thought maybe, you know how all star break get, cats get carried away. They go out and do things they're not supposed to do. I thought maybe his wife caught him doing something he wasn't supposed to. <laughs> now I'm gonna, I, I ain't gonna throw none of that other man, but you know, the way he played, he just played like, like he had something on his mind, he wasn't there, you know. Made me want to cut the damn TV off, you know. But Burks and RJ did their thing that game too, you know what I'm saying? They, Burt, RJ did his thing. And that's what I'm telling you. RJ's going to be a superstar. I'm telling you. The Knicks is not going to get rid of him. Like you see right now, when they talk about people that they're willing to trade, Randall and RJ are untouchable. Nah, you could come ask for whoever you want on the team. But them two players are untouchable. That's what I'm saying. If, if I'm seeing that, they seen it, and they there with him every day, oh, RJ's going to be a superstar. I really don't know the future of, um, of Julius come next year, you know what I'm saying, when that option kicked in afterwards. But depending on who we get and pair up with them, I, I, think we, I think we might keep Julius, you know what I'm saying, because Julius was a high draft pick. You know what I'm saying? They had high expectations for him in Los Angeles. They dropped him, I think, when the first time he played, he broke his leg, like the first game of his career. And you know, it just went a little south, south and the Lakers wanted to get better, so they traded him up. And they ain't trade Julius because he was a scrub. They, tra they traded Julius because they was getting better picks and players in the ball. All right, like I said, he had a triple-double. Matter of fact, the first Nick player to have a triple-double in 32 years. That's older than my son. You know what I'm saying? My oldest, that's older than my oldest child, to be honest with you, 32 years. He scored 26 points, 12 rebounds, 12 assists. He shot eight for 15 from the field. He went three for six from downtown and seven for 10 from the free throw. Um, two steals and three turnovers. So, and you know when I do my analogy, if you turn over the ball twice, you need to get the ball two more steals to equal that out. So he had one steal, I mean one turnover in my world. <laughs> All right, but um, yeah, he played 39 minutes and RJ did what he did in 32 minutes. And it, and I hope I, I hope I'll be talking about these two, three players. Cause you know, I mentioned um, RJ Barrett and Julius Randle first, but Emmanuel Quickly, AKA Isaiah Thomas 2.0. When he gets the chance to play, 
he produces. It's when he messes up and everything, because he know he's on a short leash because he's a rookie. And Tibbs will snatch your ass out the game quick, quick. You know what I'm saying? The only person he gives that um, you know, that, you know, that much leeway to is Julius Randle and RJ. And not, but he snatched RJ out too. You know what I'm saying? It was a couple of games back. He didn't even bring him back in the fourth quarter. So that's what I like about Tibbs. If you ain't producing, you ain't playing. But at the same time, because Quickly is a rookie, he gotta let him work through some of them bad games. You know, he got to, so that when he do have a bad game later on, his confidence won't be so bad because he's worried about getting snatched out the game. But this this game, um, we started Frank Nilekina because Derek Frank Nilekina, Frank Nilekina, because Derek Rose and uh, um, Alf, Alfred Payton was out. Um, Derek Rose, you know, the protocol still with COVID. I really want to know what's behind that. Also, um, Austin Rivers was away. Fiance had a baby, so you know that's where he's supposed to be. But we started Frank Nilakina and um, he didn't produce. I said in an earlier video, he didn't produce. And second half quickly started and quickly did what he's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 don't, I don't know why they didn't start him, but I see, you know, you need that spark off the bench. Because, you know, when quickly came in the game, the, the Knicks wasn't really playing good. You know what I'm saying? We was down by 10 points, 11 points. He came in and he gave us that spark and momentum. I mean, the first 12 minutes, he scored 12 points, you know what I'm saying, of him coming into the game and he gave us that spark and got us, got, got us back into the flow of the game. So maybe that could be the reason why they don't want to start quickly because we need that spark off the bench. But we can't continue with, um, with Frank. So what I think is going to happen is what happened in the second half, I think, if we don't start quickly, we probably start Burks. I think that's what they'll do and let quickly continue to be that spark off the bench and do what he do. Um, quickly, uh, he scored 20, 21 points. He had three rebounds, four assists. He shot nine for 16 from the field. He went three from eight from downtown and uh, two steals and one turnover in 33 minutes. I mean, that's one of his highest minutes played games and 21 points, you know what I'm saying? When he get time to produce, he produce. He, when he get time to play, he's not worried. He get, he get the flow of the game. He know the coach ain't yanking him out when he make a mistake. And then you know what? He make less mistakes when he play more. He get comfortable. That's just that's just the way, that's, that's what I see. That's just what I see. Uh, Burks had 15 points, four rebounds. He ain't had no assists. You, even when he passed the ball, most time he passed the ball, he's forcing the pass and the person he's passing to is out of position or one of them dudes that just don't make the shot. But he really, his, his assist total was kind of low. I mean, I wanted him to get up, but he do make good assists when it count because he had a game where, you know, he feed Noel a couple of good times. I like Burks. You know he's a good journeyman. Been around for a, a, a while now. I like him. Like I said, he had 15 points. Four rebounds. He shot six for eighteen from the field. Uh, 0 for three from downtown. That's you. That's not. He usually make a three pointer, but he had an off night. He went three for three from the free throw. Two steals, one turnover. He played twenty seven minutes. Uh, Reggie Bullock. I don't think you know. At first, I was coming kind of down on Bullock, but they need to get him the ball more because he's a he's a player that he needs the ball to be, to be in rhythm to shoot. And a lot of times he'd be open and they don't give him the ball and I'll be kind of mad for him. <laughs> I'm being honest, I'll be mad for him because I think he would make that shot, especially when he's open. And it's times that's when that's when he start forcing shots and that's when he start missing. Watch the game and you'll see he'll be open three or four times. They won't give him the ball. And after that, after that, if he gets the ball, he just start forcing it. If he make it, he's, uh, he make it. They might give him the ball. But when they when they put him in the flow of the game, we usually win the game. But Sometimes Julius Randle come down, he get tunnel vision, he don't pass out of double teams when you know the double team, triple team is coming, and that's what happened. It was a couple of plays like that last night that I was upset that Reggie Bullock was wide open and he shot, he was shooting the ball well, so he should have gotten the ball. But um, Bullock, he shot, um, he scored uh, 14 points, two rebounds, one assist, he shot five from 12 from the field in 37 minutes. OKC, um, Al Horford was their leading scorer. He had 16 points. 
I ain't even getting to all them. This, that, because they ain't my team. But this guy, Dort, he had 14 points. Uh, OKC had a lot of young and second year players playing. So that's why I say if the Knicks didn't win this game, I'd have been mad. And on a little side note, after the game, I seen RJ Barrett and my man Isaiah Thomas two point over there over talking to um, Alexander Gilchrist. And I said to myself, the way they was over there chatting, do they know something? Because like, I could see the Knicks, like we need an extra player to get us that, you know, spark off the bench or whatever, and, and, you know, a scorer. And Gilchrist, he been playing well this year too. But at the same time, we wouldn't have to give up a lot to get him. We can give up Frank and a second round pick for that dude. And that would, trust me, that would improve our team tremendously. Just that one player, because he is playing well. It would be somebody who come off the bench and do some score other than RJ Barrett and quickly and Randall. You know, Rose has been doing, doing his thing when he's been playing, but like I said, he's been out. I don't know, the way they was talking, that's interesting. But like I always say, I want y'all to stay healthy, stay safe, God bless, and peace.